Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is The Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The future of Kansas City International Airport is the topic of detailed study right now. The mayor's 24-member advisory group has moved its meetings to City Hall so that those meetings can be shown right here on Channel 2. During the most recent meeting, committee co-chair David Fowler said that because all options are on the table, he no longer wants members to use the phrase single terminal or to refer to it as a $1.2 billion project. Fowler says the debate is about the options, not an all or nothing approach. The committee also recently toured the airport to learn more about the 40-year-old infrastructure, security concerns, and airline operations. There were just a lot of things there that surprised me that um, that it had aged more than what I had expected in my mind when I when I went on the tour. Meetings are held every other Tuesday at 7.30 a.m. We will show them live here on Channel 2. The next meeting is September 10th. The committee expects to continue studying options for the airport through the end of this year and into early 2014. The city's Rich Nall Paysetter Award Review Board has awarded Sherry Van Winkle of the Parks and Recreation Department with the August Paysetter Award for her dedication, positive attitude, and work ethic. The Rich Nall Paysetter Award recognizes city employees who are skilled in communication, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. To learn more or to nominate an employee, visit kcmo.org slash paysetter. Just in time for back to school, the City Council passed a citywide anti-bullying ordinance that encourages personal responsibility and helps all 14 school districts in Kansas City keep minors accountable for bullying and cyberbullying, even outside of school grounds. Kansas City is one of the first cities in the nation to create citywide coverage to combat bullying. To learn more about this ordinance, visit kcmo.org slash clerk and search for ordinance number 130569. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. Fall is just around the corner and September promises to be a busy month at Bartle Hall with conventions, charity events, and festivals. From September 7th through 9th, the 2013 Association of Zoo and Aquariums Annual Conference will be at the KC Convention Center hosted by the Kansas City Zoo. This is the premier event for zoo and aquarium professionals, bringing together leaders in this community to network with peers, share successful programs, and learn about new technologies and services. For more information, visit www.aza.org. Attend the Adorn Style Show and Brunch on Saturday, September 7th at the Grand Ballroom at the Kansas City Convention Center. Guests will discover the latest fashion trends presented by professional runway models, enjoy creatively designed tablescapes, and a delicious brunch, as well as experience unique shopping at the marketplace of exclusive boutiques and local merchants. Proceeds from the Society's event benefit programs and services that enrich, stabilize, and strengthen the lives of adults and children within our community. For more information, visit www.harvestball.org slash adorn. Come enjoy the 2013 Fiesta Hispania on September 14th and 15th at Barney Alice Plaza. Fiesta Hispania celebrates National Hispanic Heritage Month. This event recognizes the significant role and contribution Hispanics have played in the development of the United States. With an average of overall attendance of more than 30,000 people, Fiesta Hispania is now the largest free admission public Hispanic event in the metro area and the Midwest. For more information, visit www.fiestahispanakansascity.com. To learn about even more events, as well as ticket information, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar. Or call 816-513-5000. The Missouri Concealed Carry Law has undergone a few slight changes. There should be no interruption in service during the transition. 
KCPD's nationally recognized Sergeant Ward Smith explains what the tweaking of the law means. In the past, you could opt for, and I think the default position was to put that um, designation on driver's licenses. Uh, at, at this point, they're going to be separated, so you'll have a driver's license and a permit separate from each other. Um, for a while, I think it's uh, the rest of this year, but at the first of the year, the state's been mandated to have the capability of handing you a hard copy. Until then, they're going to be printing up um, CCW licenses, and uh, they're going to be on card stock. Um, probably not real good for longevity, but you can always get it laminated or something like that. But after the first of the year, they're going to have a hard card that you can carry separate from your driver's license. At some point in time, some of the records from Missouri were uh, forwarded to the Social Security Commission. Uh, they were going to do a cross-check, and it, it, on the surface it all sounded very logical. Um, uh, reasoning to actually do something like that, but people were, uh, there was some concern that people might become part of a national registry or something like that. And I think the concern is to be identified as somebody that owns weapons might open you up to some kind of, you know, nefarious action by either the criminal element or something like that. So, uh, and I think there's a fear too that, you know, with some of the recent things that have come out in reference to some of the stuff going on with information and the government uh, watching citizens in the United States, that this might become part of that whole thing. So just to avoid that, they've separated the two things and you know, one thing has very little to do with the other with the driver's licenses and the licensing. Part of the change too is that they've uh, gone back and tried to clean up some of the um, certifications on instructors. In the past, uh, that wasn't clearly delineated you know, who could instruct and who was qualified to instruct. So the language in the, the uh, amendment to the laws have kind of cleaned that all up and uh, generally speaking, somebody with a law enforcement background or somebody that's been certified by a recognized firearms entity, training entity, uh, and then those people that want to carry on the CCW training would need to submit that and be approved so they could uh, actually uh, conduct the training and that it be uh, recognized by the state as being legitimate. Each county sheriff is being charged with the responsibility of issuing those new CCW cards. Um, so it'll have, in the long run, some, it'll have something to do with the Department of Revenue, but it'll be up to different sheriff's departments to um, administrate getting those uh, permits out to everybody. And like I said, after the first year, they're gonna, people that subsequently come in and get a CCW or renew a CCW will get a hard card instead of the, the paper cards that they're gonna be issuing out between now and the end of the year. And if I would say that people that have questions about that, look for um, the number for the sheriff's department in your particular county that you live in, and they're, they've got it backwards and forwards on this whole thing. They've been uh, made aware of the changes and everything, and I'm sure they have somebody um, that that's part of their job is assigned to answer any questions and allay anybody's fear in, in reference to what's going to happen with their CCW permit. As of July of this year, all 50 states have some sort of concealed carry law. Some states issue permits to residents and non-residents, while approximately a dozen states will issue permits to residents only. Both Kansas and Missouri allow private businesses to post gun-free zones. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. My name is Jessica Dahl. I'm a District Executive with Boy Scouts of America and we are out at Jerry Smith Park in Kansas City where we are having a week-long Cub Scout day camp which features uh, active 25 different activities for over 400 boys that come from Southern Jackson County and Cass County. Uh, it's ran by about 80 volunteers and about 100 volunteers within the boys to make sure everything runs smoothly. Hold it up like you're gonna shoot. Uh, we've been, this is our second year out of Jerry Smith Park, and we've been doing Cub Scout Day Camp for years. Couldn't tell you how long. Our activities include archery, catapults, BB guns, cub mobile races, and a lot of different other fun.
to join uh, Cub Scout, uh, all the parents need to do is visit bscout.org and type in your zip code and it'll come up with various units in your area so the boys can join and come do activities like this. Looking ahead, the Main Street Bridge over I-670, that's on the south side of the downtown loop, will close on September 13th for improvements. During construction, traffic will detour to Oak and Baltimore streets. This project replaces the existing bridge with a three-lane concrete bridge that improves vertical clearance and other traffic issues. The project includes better sidewalks, crosswalks, ramps, lighting, and fencing. The Main Street Bridge should reopen in November. In observance of the Labor Day holiday on Monday, September 2nd, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day and city offices and the 311 call center will be closed. Residents who usually have Monday collection will receive that service on Tuesday, September 3rd. Residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday, September 7th. Nonprofit Kansas City organizations interested in applying for a 2014 to 15 reimbursable grant from the Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund are strongly encouraged to attend an informational workshop. Six workshops are scheduled, one in each district. The schedule is as follows. Thursday, September 5th from 1 to 3 p.m. at Northland Neighborhoods. Saturday, September 7th from 10 to noon at Trailside Center. Monday, September 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Gem Theater. Tuesday, September 10th from 2 to 4 p.m. at Guadalupe Center. Wednesday, September 11th from 10 a.m. to noon at the Aviation Department. And also Wednesday, September 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Hillcrest Community Center. Application packets will be available at the workshops and those are due back by October 15th. For more information about the grant eligibility and the fund, visit kcmo.org ntdf. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org. Just scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner and click on the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.